Hey guys. So Western countries that want to support Ukraine militarily without getting directly in conflict with Russia significantly increased weapons delivery to the Ukrainian army since Moscow began its invasion on February 24th. But it's the US-made Javelin that has become the favored weapon to such a degree that it's been called the Saint Javelin on social media and has turned into a religious icon. Images of Ukrainian soldiers with the Javelin on their shoulders have been seen around the world. This makes this anti-tank weapon capable of penetrating even the thickest armor, and especially useful in a guerrilla war, a symbol of Ukrainian resistance to the Russian invasion. Additionally, the Javelin has become a symbol of U.S. support, Ukraine's most powerful ally in the fight against Russia. It is also praised for its technical characteristics. So, the portable anti-tank missiles are specially designed to destroy main battle tanks with more powerful armor than other types of armored vehicles, like armored transports. Equipped with a tandem heat warhead, it can penetrate even the most advanced tanks in the world, including the Russian T-90, whose reactive armor reacts to the missile's contact to decrease or even stop it from penetrating the tank. The Javelin has a tandem warhead with an explosive-shaped charge that damages the armored target by creating a small hole in its armor. The armor material creates several tons of pressure per square inch, which exceeds the limits of the metal strength, creating a small 3-inch hole in the armor. It can hit its mark from 8,200 feet and can be used as a direct attack to destroy a target or to shoot upwards and destroy low-flying planes or helicopters. It is often used in indirect attacks from above. The missile flies up 525 feet, then falls vertically at its target, like the javelins used by the ancient Romans. This trajectory is what makes it such a dangerous anti-tank weapon, because the entrance port in tanks is on the top of the tower, and that's where they are most vulnerable. This missile can completely destroy an enemy tank by detonating its ammunition, and the internal explosion will generally completely destroy the tank's tower. The missiles can also be used in a direct fire method against less armored transport vehicles, like armored transports, buildings, or even low flying helicopters with devastating results. But a direct shot may even be enough for tanks if it hits an area with thinner armor. Even a glancing blow from this weapon can be enough to disable a tank, if not destroy it outright. So, anti-tank missiles present a significant and, more importantly, difficult to detect threat for armored columns. This makes them very flexible and a dangerous weapon for the enemy. So, the Javelin is lighter than other anti-tank systems that require tripods and can be shoulder-fired. One soldier is sufficient to carry and operate the Javelin, although it requires more people to carry additional launch tubes. Generally, the missile system is operated by a team of two people, a tracker and a gunner. While the gunner is loading the missile and launching it, the tracker looks for supposed targets, watches for threats like enemy vehicles or soldiers, and monitors them to make sure that people or obstacles don't get in the missile's direct path. Now, the main difference with the American Javelin anti-tank missile is that it is a shoot-and-forget style weapon that can be used in both direct and indirect fire. The Javelin uses infrared technology that helps the missile autopilot towards any heat signature. This target can be locked before firing, and the missile will guide itself so the gunner can hide before the missile hits its target. The missile's main motor activates several yards after launching, letting the soldier be less visible and even use the javelin inside buildings. Most missile launchers require a more open space behind the gunner to prevent backfire injuries. The javelin uses a smooth launch mechanism to eliminate this negative quality without increasing the recoil to an undesired amount. The launch motor uses typical rocket fuel and launches the missile out of the launch system. But 
it doesn't stop heating until the missile leaves the pipe. The flight motor has a delay to provide the operator sufficient safety. Now, according to an American military instructor, it's very easy to use. If you've played video games, you could use it, he said. Now, unlike other missiles which are single use, the Javelin has a command launch unit with GPS and an infrared camera that can zoom in on its target and be used any number of times. This is what the single-use missile tube attaches to. The command launch unit is valuable because it can be used without ammo to monitor and observe the enemy. Now, in 1983, the U.S. Army presented its requirements for the AAWSM, and the AAWSM was approved for development in 1985. Fast forward to August 1986, the development phase began when a contract for $30 million for technical proof demonstrators was signed. In late 1988, this phase ended, and in June 1989, a full-scale development contract was awarded to a joint venture between Raytheon and Lockheed Martin. The AAWSM was called the FGM-148. In April 1991, the first test flight succeeded, and in March 1993, the first test firing from the launcher succeeded. Now in 1994, initial production was approved, and the first Javelins were given to the U.S. Army in 1996. According to the Pentagon's budget, in 2021, the cost of the Javelin was $178,000, including the launch system and missile, and each replacement missile and its hermetic launch tube costs about $78,000. So the Javelin was used by the U.S. Army, U.S. Marine Corps, and Australian Special Forces during the Iraq invasion in 2003 against Iraqi Type 69 and Lion of Babylon tanks. During a battle near Debeka, a platoon of U.S. Special Forces equipped with Javelins destroyed two T-55 tanks, eight armored personnel carriers, and four troop trucks. Also, the Javelin was effectively used during the war in Afghanistan. But the peak of its fame has been during the Russian invasion in Ukraine. The main battle tanks that Russia has unleashed in large numbers use modern and advanced armor technology, including explosive reactive armor. In other words, the tank's armor explodes outwards when it's attacked by a warhead. This is done to redirect the blast wave and result in minimal sustained damage. However, as proven by Ukrainian tank shooters, the reactive armor does nothing to protect the tanks from the Javelin's tandem warhead. It is difficult to evaluate the complete amount and designation of the destroyed Russian military vehicles, but reports show that the number of tanks lost on the third week of the invasion at 500 units when Russian armored columns entered the urban regions of Ukraine, their tanks were even more vulnerable to javelin fire if they weren't supported by infantry. Ukrainian soldiers armed with a javelin hide and move quickly, destroying one tank after another. Messages have indicated that the Russians have suffered heavy losses from the anti-tank weapons, including images visible online where Russian soldiers are installing homemade screens and nets over their tanks to try to defend them. Various internet messages call them survival nets. Of course, they aren't very effective at minimizing the missile's effects, but they do show that Russian soldiers are afraid of the threat posed by the Javelin. Officially, for every 112 launches of a Javelin missile in Ukraine, 100 armored vehicles have been destroyed. That's quite an impressive statistic. It seems like this weapon has made a difference towards our common goal. The Ukrainian army in a short amount of time has not only stopped the invasion, but even begun a counterattack in various directions. Well, that's all for today. Leave a like if you thought this was interesting. Uh, be sure to let me know what you learned in the comments and let me know too if you think this conflict is going to start World War III. I'm sure hoping not, but who knows. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again next time.